Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to look at the McFarlane DC Multiverse Blue Beetle and Booster Gold 2 pack. I got this from the McFarlane Toy Store. It's in stock right now. I think it's really cool. They're giving us a Blue Beetle and Booster Gold 2 pack. Two heroes in their iconic looks. No Dark Knight's Metal, no weird stuff, just some normal DC heroes. And I really appreciate it. They went with the Ted Cord version of Blue Beetle, as that would be my preferred figure to get first. So let's go and check out the packaging. As you can see, it is 12 plus, DC Multiverse, Blue Beetle, and Booster Gold. Here they are in the package. They have a bunch of accessories, in addition to a collector's card and display stand for each of the figures. One side of the pack, Blue Beetle and Booster Gold. Other side, same thing. At the bottom, got a bunch of credits, and there is a barcode, in case that helps anybody. And on the back side, here are the two of them running from an angry mob. So no further ado, let's open it up. Here are all the different McFarland two-packs they've made so far. I always get the Batman-related stuff to keep both open and unopen. This is the first two-pack that doesn't have a Batman-related character in it. So this is going to be the last time I can make a shot of all the two-packs. As I'm going to open this Booster Gold and Blue Beetle pack and move forward, I won't have an unopened one. Just sounds very interesting. You can see McFarlane getting more comfortable with the DC line, not relying on Batman nearly as much as they used to. It's still always going to be a Batman centric line, but they're definitely branching out, and that's pretty cool. All right, now that we have these figures out of the package, here they are with all their accessories laid out. They both come with a display stand, a collector's card. There's a display base that they both share. Blue Beetle has a grapnel launcher, and then Booster Gold. He has a cell phone, an energy effect to come out of one of his arms, and his little robot skeets. Before we take a look at the accessories, let's talk about and check out both the figures. In this video, we'll take a look at each of the figures individually. We'll check out their accessories, height, and articulation. But first, let's take a quick look at both of them. Here's Blue Beetle, looking fantastic. Ted Cord, the second of three Blue Beetles. You can see his body here on his outfit. He's got sort of the design of the Beetle. It looks great. The body here is very basic. Got some boots, just regular paint job all the way. It's not sculpted here, it's just painted on the general body. Double jointed elbows, double jointed knees, all that good stuff. Pretty blank canvas, should be really nice for custom. Then looking at Booster Gold, hair looks pretty good, the goggles are decent, although I feel like they could be transparent, would be a lot nicer. They appear to be done on pretty much the same base buck body, and you know what? It seems like it works pretty good. You can even see the boots here, they have the same sculpted sort of line at the top, just lazily kind of painted over. Double jointed knees, elbows, I do see some differences, the head probably the hands, but overall a lot of reuse here, and you know what? I think it works. So first of all, let's check out this diorama base. This is an accessory that's shared between both the figures. It's pretty much just a random little metallic platform. Detailing's pretty nice, got some grates, all kind of different wires. We've got a couple different pegs for the peg holes on their feet. Not a bad diorama, but I'm probably not going to get that much use out of it. It does have a little area here where you can insert skeets into. That's pretty cool. Here's Blue Beetle with Booster Gold approaching him on the diorama. We have his little robot skeets on the bottom left. These guys have been friends and partners a lot over the years, so it's a perfect themed two-pack. Giving us two previously unreleased DC heroes in their normal looks. A great way to kill two birds with one stone, get a lot of reuse, and get two classic iconic looking versions of these two characters. Two thumbs up from me. Here's Blue Beetle with all of his accessories laid out. Display stand, collector's card, and his little beetle grapnel launcher. So this is Ted Cord. He's the second of three Blue Beetles. He's a sort of technological genius, but also 
a smart ass. He loves making his little puns. So we took a look at both figures a second ago. They appear to share the same general base body. And you know what it works. Nice, slim, generic hero buck. He's got the bug eyes here. And I think the solid yellow works a little better on Blue Beetle than Booster Gold. But being that transparent would be cool. He's got that grinning, smart-ass face. Beetle logo on his suit. Like I said, just a generic base body, but it works really good for this character. In fact, the reuse worked good for both of them. And we will check out the reuse shortly. And just a closer look at his face and head sculpt. I think the head sculpt is fantastic. The eyes may leave a little bit to be desired, but the mouth, it all looks really well done. The paint job is almost as good as the sculpt. Overall, I just want to point out how nice and crisp paint job on his costume is. The colors match. It's just a perfect, iconic version of this Blue Beetle. Very well done. I love McFarland make figures like this, and I hope to bring on plenty more regular versions of DC superheroes. Now let's look at Blue Beetle's accessories, and let's start off with the boring stuff. Here's his display stand. Typical McFarland stand, black perfect circle. It says DC on the bottom. It's got one peg for the pegles on his feet. It's very thin, very basic. Now let's look at his collector's card. As you can see, it's an image of Blue Beetle from the comics. He's got his vehicle in the background. Blue Beetle from Blue Beetle and Booster Gold, Blue and Gold. On the back side, there is a description. If you want to read that, go ahead and pause now. Now let's look at a Grapnel Launcher. I'm kind of surprised he was able to come with this, as Warner Brothers has a no gun mandate. And I'm kind of surprised they approved this in the package. No guns in any way, shape, or form are allowed to come with the figures from DC. I know a Graviton Launcher is not exactly a gun, but I figured the suits at Warner Brothers wouldn't get that. As you can see, a little sort of gun type thing launches a grapnel, and it has a beetle on the end. Very appropriate for Blue Beetle. Here's Blue Beetle holding and getting ready to launch up using his Graviton Launcher. Now they're taking a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories. Now let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, he's standing at about 6.9 inches tall, which would translate to about 17 and a half centimeters. Now let's check out his articulation. Starting with his head here, of course, it can rotate from side to side. He can look up about that far, down about that far. Pretty nice there. He can tilt his head from one side to the other giving him a good amount of personality. Shoulders on a ball joint, goes out more than 90 degrees, up, down, around, all that good stuff. He does have this butterfly joint between his shoulder and chest area, increase the range of motion and cover up the gap. Butterfly joint is a little bit large and noticeable and the paint scheme it matches the top but not the bottom, so it just looks a little off there. Bicep cut below that, although I'm not getting a huge range of motion out of it. Double jointed elbows. Then his wrist, it's done in the newer style, not the ugly ball joints. It can rotate, and it's going to be hinged as well. Ball joint is torso, rotate around, forward and back. Another ball joint is waist, rotate around, forward and back, giving him a very good range of motion his torso area. And it looks good, even if you stretch it to the most. Legs, complete as the splits, not a ball joint, but a similar type of concept. Rotation is pretty much non-existent. They go forward about that far. Back, not much. Double jointed elbows and his ankles, also done in the newer style. Look how seamless they are compared to those ugly ball joints. Forward and back, rotate, tilt, rock, and toe articulation. Before we move on to Booster Gold, I wanted to check out the reuse between the two figures. Now, of course, their heads are completely different. Their torso, chest, stomach area looks to be exactly the same. You can see the muscle sculpted on both of them. But it just does not look the same when looking at them. The paint job and reuse works pretty good for the figures. Shoulders, 
and bicep area, they look to be the same. This bottom part, the forearm, looks to be different. He's got the sculpted sort of cut here. And he's got the longer sort of joint between the forearm and the hand. The hands themselves are different. You can see his gloves, the sculpted piece on top. The crotch sort of diaper area is a little bit different. He's got the sculpted belt, and I feel like these black lines are a little bit sculpted. Then the legs and the boots are identical. The only thing that really bothers me is a sculpted line here that I don't think should be there. Just lazily painted over. They probably had a different figure's legs they could have used for that guy. But as a whole, the reuse works pretty good. Give me us two fantastic characters, and they really both look really nice. If this is how they have to do it, then more power to them. Bring it on. The reuse does not bother me. These guys both look great. What do you guys think? Is the reuse annoying? Is it noticeable? I don't think it is. And here is Booster Gold with all of his accessories laid out. Display stand, collector's card, little cell phone or smartphone, an energy blast effect that will attach to one of his arms, and then we have Skeets, his robot. Before we take a look at those, let's check out the figure real quick. So of course, we've got Booster Gold here. My biggest problem is his glasses. It'd be nice if you could see his eyes through them, but not that big of a deal. The hair looks pretty good. The same base buck body. One cool thing, they included his flight ring from his days with the Legion of Superheroes. It's little details like that that really just make these figures over the top. And you can tell the people behind the scenes have a lot of passion for the source material. Double jointed knees, double jointed elbows. It's kind of a basic looking figure, but it's a good basic looking figure. And just a closer look at his face and head sculpt. Captured personality, smiling. The visor, eh, it's something a little off about that. It's just the fact that you can't see through it. My guy has a little paint defect on his left cheek. Looks like a welt or a bruise. I think it's a little bit more noticeable in person than on screen. I like it. Just very clean, crisp looking. This is everybody's favorite, oh yeah, some people's not so favorite time traveler. Booster Gold was from the 25th century. He went back in time, sort of make a name for himself. Him and Blue Beetle, I would say they're friends. They work together, on and off. Now let's look at his accessories. We already looked at Blue Beetle's display stand, and Booster's is exactly the same. Here's his display card. We got an image of Booster Gold from the comics. You can see those energy effects coming out of the item on his hands there. This is Booster Gold from Blue Beetle and Booster Gold, Blue and Gold. On the back side, there is a description. If you want to read that, go ahead and pause now. Now let's look at the little robot Skeets. Skeets is a BX9 security robot from the 25th Century Space Museum. He came back in time with Booster. He has news headlines for the next 50 years, helping him in the past with some future. Now Skeets has looked different in a lot of different incarnations. This is what this version looks like, and it's pretty cool. Pretty much a character of his own. He does plug into the diorama with this down here. Now let's look at his energy effect. It's a pretty cool accessory. It's got this blue energy coming out. It's got this copper piece that'll wrap around his wrist or his hand. I think he really could have used two of these. Here's Booster Gold. Using the energy effect. It touches to his wrist. It looks pretty cool. You should be able to use this for other McFarland DC Multiverse figures. Now let's look at his cell phone or smartphone accessory. I believe this is an iPhone. I'd assume it's like an iPhone 57 from the future. It's got a little power button on the side, volume buttons on the other side, screen in the middle, yellow color, pretty cool accessory. On the back side, you can even see where the cameras will be. I can see myself getting a ton of use with a smartphone accessory, not just for Booster Gold, but for a bunch of other action figures. Here's Booster Gold, taking himself a nice little selfie with the camera. Gotta have the right lighting, and take it from an upward angle. Now let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, 
He's standing at about 7.1 or 7.2 inches tall, which doesn't surprise me. It's the same body, but this guy has a lot bigger hair. It's going to translate to about 18 centimeters. Now let's check out his articulation. Should be pretty much exactly the same as Blue Beetle. His head can rotate from side to side. Can look up and down about that far. Very nice. Tilt his head from one side to the other. Shoulders. Ball joint. Goes out a little bit more than 90 degrees. Up, down, around. All that good stuff. He's got that large butterfly joint. Just like Blue Beetle, it's a little bit too big. The paint job is a little bit off. No real good way to handle that, though. He's got bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows below that. Then his wrist can rotate, and it's going to be hinged. Ball joint is torso, rotate around, forward and back. Another one is waist, rotate around, forward and back. Very nice range of motion there. Not quite as seamless as Blue Beetle. You can sort of see down in the diaper area a little bit if he's really stretching the articulation. Legs, complete as splits, not a ball joint, similar idea. Rotation's non-existent. Legs go forward, about that far. Back, not much. Double jointed knees. Then the ankle here, forward and back. Rotation, tilt, rock, and toe articulation. Here's a couple of my recreations of some of McFarland's promotional material for this two-pack. Here's Booster Gold taking a selfie. Both Booster and Blue Beetle are flexing in the picture. They love entertaining their fans, but as much as they goof off, they can jump into action at a moment's notice. Now let's check them out, next to some other action figures. Normally, I would start off by comparing them with some other Blue Beetle and Booster Gold figures, but I don't have any. Back when I was collecting DC Universe Classics, they had a pretty nice Blue Beetle and Booster Gold, but I was only getting the Batman related stuff. I didn't feel like I needed them, and frankly, I don't really need them now, but these are some really nice figures, and I'm all in with the McFarlane line. So let's go ahead and start off by comparing them with some of the McFarlane DC Multiverse figures. Here's this regular version of Booster Gold and Blue Beetle, next to a traditional Superman and Batman. Here's the more colorful side of DC, the fun side. Kind of refreshing after all the Dark Knight's Metal stuff. Add in a classic version of Martian Manhunter, Hal Jordan, Aquaman, and The Flash. And our standard DC hero roster is really gaining some ranks finally. Add in some Injustice 2 and movie characters, and you've got a pretty big roster of DC heroes. The movie Cyborg, Injustice Doctor Fate and Green Arrow, the movie Wonder Woman, and Sport Green Lanterns. And here is McFarland's extended Justice League. Bring on some more. The ones most noticeably absent would be a comic version of Wonder Woman and a regular Shazam of, of some sort. Now let's check them out. Next is one of the McFarland 2 packs. I believe this is the first McFarland 2 pack they made Flash vs. Red Death. Then they released a New 52 Nightwing and a Red Hood 2 pack. Next, they made a Warner exclusive Arkham Asylum. Titan and muddied up Batman vs. Joker 2 pack. After that, they made this angry face Action Comics 1000 Superman vs. Devastator 2 pack. Here's the Blue Beetle 2 pack next to Hal Jordan vs. Dawnbreaker. This is still the only way to get a traditional Hal Jordan figure. Then they made the Batman vs. Azrael Curse of the White Knight 2 pack. A little while later, they did the Batman the Dark Knight Returns Superman vs. Armored Batman 2 pack. And the most recent two-pack they released is Batman vs. Hush. What two-packs would you guys like to see? Drop me a line in the comments below. I personally think a comic Harley Quinn vs. Punchline two-pack would be awesome. But there are some really obvious easy sellers out there. Maybe a classic Batman and Robin pack. A modern Batman and Robin pack. A Hush, Poison Ivy, and Superman. The possibilities are endless. Now let's check them out. Next to some other recently released McFarland DC Multiverse figures. Here they are, next to the two newest mega figures, Bane and Necron. Then, next to the Walmart exclusive, gold label Azrael Batman Armor and Parallax Hal Jordan. And here they are, next to the Court of Owls Talon and the Infinite Frontier Scarecrow. And here, with the Future State Superman and the New 52 Static Shock. Then, next to the first series of Page Puncher figures, Still trying to track down the black and white version of Black Adam. Here are these two figures next to the Black Adam movie wave. 
And here they are, next to Blackest Night Wave. Collect a build Atrocitus. Then, here they are, next to the McFarland Toy Store exclusive. Gold label paint variants of the Arkham Knight Scarecrow and Red Hood. And now, next to Martian Manhunter, both classic and rebirth. Here they are, next to the Target exclusive Crime Syndicate, Ultraman, Superwoman, and Owlman. And here they are, with both versions of the Dark Detective Batman. Then, next to all three versions of Lex Luthor and his power suit. Here they are, next to Duke Thomas as Batman, and the Batman Who Laughs, dressed as Batman. And finally, next to both versions of the Zarnar Batman, and all three versions of the Infinite Frontier Robin. Now let's check them out. Next is some action figures from different various companies to see how they fit in both scale and style wise, in case you want to know what signs you can mix them with. Since they're McFarland toys, they're typically the 7 inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the large action figure lines I collect and work my smaller. But first, Let's check them out next to some of the McFarland Toys brothers. In Freddy were five different action figure lines, all from McFarland Toys, all 7 inch scale. Then, with some more McFarland Toys, these are from different various video game properties. And now, next to some Jack specific wrestling figures. And here they are, next to some DST or Diamond Select Toys. Then, next to some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. And here they are. Standing next to some NECA figures. Then, next to some Mattel wrestling figures. And now, next to some Jazzwares AEW wrestlers. And here they are, next to some Mezco 112 collective figures. Then, next to some Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse figures. And here they are, next to some Mayfax figures. Then, with some Hasbro Marvel Legends. And here they are. Next is some SH figure arts action figures. And finally, here they are. Next is some Jazz Wars Fortnite figures. Overall, these are some fantastic figures. I love the classic look to them. They're in their normal, iconic designs. About the only real complaint I would give is their visors, especially Booster Gold. It'd be nice if they were semi transparent and you can kind of see some eyes underneath there. Beyond that, these guys are almost perfect. The sculpted boot area on Booster Gold, it's a little annoying and lazy. I get these are the same base buck bodies, and it works perfect as far as I'm concerned. But they probably had another leg they could have put on there without that sculpted boot. The only other very minor complaint is the butterfly joints. They're a little bit too big, and they're very noticeable, at least on the bottom half where the paint doesn't match. Once again, very minor complaints. The figure's sculpt and paint job are excellent. Their accessories are very cool. Their articulation is everything you would expect from a McFarland DC Multiverse figure. And for about 80% reuse, they pulled it off nicely. If I had to rate this pack, I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. But my enjoyability is probably an 8 out of 10. I had a fun time doing this video, setting up those poses. Nice bright figures from the DC Universe, refreshing after all this Dark Knight's metal, and I do enjoy that stuff, but I'm happy that McFarlane's giving us a big mix of movies, comics, classic comics, modern comics, darker comics, video games, all aspects of the DC multiverse. So this is D Hunter, thank you guys for watching this video, if you liked the video, press like below, if you have anything you want to say about the video, add it to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.